Welcome to state television company Western Armenia, broadcast for today. The establishment of the Armenian Petang Federation and the plans for participation in international tournaments. The 2024 archery ceremony of Western Armenia, Armangri Korean. Adam Shift proposes confiscating Baku's revenues and directing them to the Artsakh Revenue Recovery Fund. Artsakh September attacked victims, civilians, and soldiers. Sons of Western Armenia, and Nikozanyan. The Tatoyan Foundation's report revealed the tactics of Azerbaijan's armed attack. The closed doors of Akhal Kalaki. On 19 September, an important meeting took place in the Yerevan Representation Office of Western Armenia, which brought together the President of the National Council of the Republic of Western Armenia, Mr. Armenak Abrahamian, Gerard Davidian, and Petris Muradian. The main topic of discussion was the establishment of the Petang Federation of Armenia and the Federation's goals regarding participation in international tournaments. The Petang Federation is taking new steps to ensure that the national team is involved in the Armenian and World Petang Championships. Petang, which is widely known as a national sport in France, is now trying to find a stable place in the sports arena of Armenia. In this regard, the Federation intends to establish the country's first official Petang club as well as create a Petang school, which will help to spread and develop this sport in Armenia. Mikhail Khachatryan, a well-known and respected player in the world of Petang, is a core of the strategic project of the Petang Federation of Armenia. His impressive successes highlight the great potential for the Armenian team in the international arena. Khachatryan's accomplishment includes three-time French champion, title in the 2016 triples competition, the 2019 one-on-one -on -one competition, and the 2022 two-on-two -two competition. He is also the winner of the French Cup and the European Club Cup, as well as the winner of the Petang Masters Tournament. One of the Federation's ambitions goals is to organize a World Championship in Yerevan, promoting the development of Petank in Armenia and strengthening its position in the Armenian sports arena. On 15 September, the closing ceremony took place on the 2024 Archery Championship of Western Armenia. Participants from different regions and communities demonstrated their abilities and training in this traditional sport. Arman Grikorian, the organizer of the event, mentioned in this speech, I am very proud of you. I am glad that the Archery Championship is being held in Armenia for the second time. This championship has a future because archery is a sport created by Armenians and we must struggle to keep this trophy. The ceremony is an evidence to the great interest in archery and the importance of preserving this valuable part of Armenian culture. Adam Schiff, a member of the U.S. House of Representatives, has introduced a bill to seize Baku's financial assets and transfer them to the Artsakh Revenue Recovery Fund, which will be created to provide compensation to Armenians forcibly displaced from Artsakh. She noted that Baku's actions against the people of Artsakh have created a humanitarian disaster and are tantamount of ethnic cleansing. The draft and we see gauge providing compensation to Armenians and confiscating Baku's assets to make those payments. In 2023, on 19 up to 20 September, the armed forces of Azerbaijan launched an attack on Artsakh, which had been under siege for nine months. From the first minutes of the attack, not only combat positions and military units, but also civilian settlements were shelled. According to official data, more than 200 people died, including 21 civilians and six children. The relatives of soldiers who died in the September battle and were buried in Artsakh are appealing to the government, asking to transfer their remains to Armenia. We bow before all the victims in Artsakh, mentioning them by name. I have never sought personal happiness and well-being in my life. I always strived for only one thing and struggled for only one thing, for the freedom and well-being of my people. And Anik Ozanian said, whom Armenians simply call Andranik, was a famous and 
exceptionally popular military leader who enjoyed great honor both among compatriots and foreigners. In the last years of the Ottoman Empire, his war exploits before and after the genocide against Armenians and are of one of the few episodes of armed defense of Armenians against Turkish and Kurdish atrocities. After leaving the Ottoman Empire, Andranik went to struggle against the Turkish army in Bulgaria, then returned to Armenia, where during the First Republic of Armenia, he undertook the task of protecting the Armenian population in Artsakh in the east and Zangezur in the south. The honor of ensuring the physical existence of the Armenian population of that region against Azerbaijan aggression is attributed to him and military leader Garegi Nezde. In 1919, Nandanik visited the United States to organize a fundraiser for genocide survivors and Armenian refugees from the war and manages to raise 500,000 U.S. dollars, equivalent to about 7 million U.S. dollars today. Shortly after that, he finally moved to the United States and settled in Fresno, where there was a large Armenian colony at that time. Andanik died in California, but his memorial services were organized in Armenian communities around the world. In 2000, his remains were transferred to Armenia and reburied in Yerablur, in the Armenian military pantheon. A monument with the inscription Soldier of Armenians is now standing on his grave. Former Member Parliament of Eastern Armenia Arman Tatoyan presented the data of the new report of the Tatoyan Foundation on his Facebook page, referring to the Azerbaijan attacks on Artsakh on 19 up to 20 September. He noted that the text had elaborated tactics starting at half past 12 on 19 September, targeting schools and civilian infrastructures. The four main directions of the text aimed to cut off the four communities of Artsakh, Stepanagert, Martunin, Askeran, and Martakert region with their villages, as well as to cut off the connection with the position of Artsakh Defense Army. All this was planned so that the residents could not resist and the military could not form the population. As a result of the Azerbaijani attack, dozens of people, including children, were killed, captured and forcibly displaced, and in total more than 120,000 Armenians. The attacks were based on the Azerbaijani state policy of hatred and racism, as well as impunity in 2020, after the 44-day war. Emigration continues in Akhalkalaki municipality, where at least one family in almost every village is preparing to leave home in a search of a prosperous life. There are 13,100 households in the municipality, and according to J News, 1,090 of the 64 villages are already closed. Over the past year, about 176 families have left the municipality, mostly young people, who often move to Russia and other countries. Reasons for emigration include, first, economic factor, low living standards and lack of jobs, educational opportunities, young people go to big cities or abroad, political instability, reminiscent of the early 90s, seasonal jobs, men are looking for long-term work abroad, the main destination of migration are Russia and Western European countries. Closed houses in villages indicate the removal of residents, including newly built but already abandoned houses. Dear viewers, this was all for today. I wish you good weekends. Goodbye.